welcome back. Two best friends trying to win the amazing race say their cross-country trek was about much more than coming in first. Catherine Reefred Ledlow and Craig Ramsey set out on an epic 20,000 kilometer journey as contestants of the reality show. Sandy Rinaldo explains why their adventure is in some ways a race against time that has turned into a message of inspiration and hope. Palm Springs, California. Winter home to the stars. People like Elvis Presley, Liberace, and Marilyn Monroe used to have homes on these elegant streets. The famous, the infamous, and the influencers all flocking to this popular resort city. <laughs> on this sunny December day, a reunion of newly minted Canadian celebrities. <laughs> Here to celebrate the winners of The Amazing Race Canada Season 8. All the world a stage! Yes. Winnipeg's Catherine Reeford Ledlow and Harlow, Ontario's Craig Ramsey, nicknamed Team Broadway. Hey, you all are here in Palm Springs. Hey. Joining them, teams Franca and Nella, Cassie and Jamik, Marika from Jesse and Marika, and Court of Team Court and Allie. A unique group of friends who bonded under unorthodox circumstances. Love. He was so fast, and I was like, yeah, we just competitors, confidants, and frenemies. They are together for the first time since Catherine and Craig amazed everyone and won the competition. Talk about that moment, right? Entering the stadium. Oh, like gosh. you were in total disbelief. This has to be BC Place. Catherine, make your way to the field. It felt like magical. It just felt like surreal. It felt impossible, like it felt that we had accomplished something that everybody else thought was impossible. Best friends forever, making their way to the mat in Vancouver's BC place. Catherine. Did we do this? We did it! No, did we? We did it! <laughs> the race brought me back to my way of living life. More like, I stare something down, I'm like, I can do that. Yo! Team Broadway was one of ten to face a competition that would test the limits of their bodies, ha! their brains, Catherine, where are you going? The bonds of friendship. It's okay. Mistakes happen. And so let's talk about what makes the two of you best friends. Even just sitting here now, like I just got here, and I'm immediately filled with joy. Just like sitting here and talking to him, I just feel like happy. It's a comfort, I feel. Yeah. Like instantly, everything is okay. Yeah. The two have been tested in so many ways over 25 years of an enduring friendship. And even though Craig lives in Palm Springs most of the time. Hello. The outgoing Craig and energetic Catherine share an unbreakable bond and a five, six, seven, eight. One and two and three, four. A love of the performing arts. Catherine and I met at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet uh, School and we instantly bonded. We wanted to experience a lot more of the arts than just ballet together. And they would experience a lot together. Catherine's talent quickly catapulted her on an upward trajectory. My first professional show, which was West Side Story, was amazing. But even like when I was 16, when I played Liesl in Sound of Music in Winnipeg at Rainbow Stage, I just felt like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. That sort of got things moving and shaking. From Winnipeg to Stratford, Toronto, and then the bright lights of New York and Broadway beckoned. What was the highlight of all of that? When I had my Broadway debut, Craig had come to it. Everybody was crying in the audience and we were trying hard not to cry on stage. Craig was on a parallel journey, his career also skyrocketing. I was in Anne Green Gables, the original Mamma Mia pre-Broadway touring cast. Then from there, Broadway, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Fiddler on the Roof. Success followed them everywhere, propelling Catherine all the way to the Tony Awards. We were the opening act of the Tonys. 
we come down the stairs and out into the subway. We had to stop the subway in the middle of the night and then live when we ran onto stage. What a feeling, you know? Oh, it was amazing. Amazing for sure, the glitz, the glamour. The stars were aligning even in her personal life. Catherine fell in love with actor Jeff Goldblum of Jurassic Park fame. They started dating. He asked her to marry him. They even filmed a mockumentary about their relationship. He called me uh, yesterday and said he found a production of The Music Man in Pittsburgh. The couple was engaged for three years, living in California together, but they broke up, never married. Catherine found herself alone in California and burned out. The years of Broadway, constant training, and the Hollywood life were taking a toll. After 20 years of performing, it was time to move on. I was doing a bunch of not so good stuff for myself, and I was like, no, this needs to change. So I uh, went to nursing school and uh, got a job during nighttime so I could go to school during the day. Catherine was building a new life for herself, and while working nights at a sushi restaurant in Los Angeles, she met Joel Ledlow. What was it about Catherine that made her the one that you fell in love with? We just connected, and I think our relationship started with open honesty. They married in 2010, started a family, moved to Oklahoma while Catherine was still in nursing school. I've always been really interested in medical information. Right. And when I was younger, I always said I was going to be a brain surgeon. It was eerie foreshadowing of what was to come because in 2013, five weeks after daughter Quinn was born, when son Elliot was just three, Catherine started feeling unwell, headaches, confusion. Joel noticed. She was just having these headaches. She'd had some vision problems in there and we never really recognized a lot of it. We brought Craig out to, to hang out and just visit. We were working out and she was struggling and Catherine has never complained about anything physical. So for Catherine to say, I need to sit down and I can't do this, and she was grabbing her head, I felt in my heart, I said, get to the emergency, get to the, the doctor immediately. It was worse than anyone could have imagined. What did they tell you? So I went into the CT scan, they were, everybody's faces were white, and then they were like trying not to look me in the eyes, and then all these doctors started coming in, and um, I think the neuro guy was there, and he said, we, we found a mass on your brain, and they showed it to me, and it was um, bigger than my fist right, right here. And at that point, did it register that yeah, this was I serious? Was, I knew something was bad. Two days before her 33rd birthday, Catherine was given a devastating diagnosis, anaplastic astrocytoma, and told she had just two to six years to live. And I said, uh, can I call my husband? So I called him and he, he was working, so he didn't answer the phone, and, and so then I, then I called Craig. I got a call from her that said, I have terminal brain cancer. I have a, a tumor in my brain. A surgical craniotomy, aggressive chemotherapy, radiation followed. In those moments where she was facing her mortality, she reached out to you. What were those conversations like? Immediately following the surgery, Catherine couldn't talk. So it was a one-sided conversation that I had to have with Catherine where I could hear grunts and, and groans and we would identify a yes or no and I would speak for her because she wanted to have those conversations. So she was frustrated, she was angry, she was surprised, she was sad, heartbroken. Coming up. She's one of those people that you go to cheer her up and she ends up cheering you up. <laughs> A beacon of strength in hard times. I want people to see that things are possible even with a terminal diagnosis. When W5 continues. Catherine Reford Ledlow and Craig Ramsey, best friends for life in good times and bad. She was having headaches and she was uh, passing out. So there were some signs. There were some symptoms, but I just ignored them and pretended I was fine. So we did a CT scan and then everything changed. 
Catherine was told she had terminal brain cancer and had just two to six years to live. A year of grueling treatments, the loss of her short-term memory, seizures were taking a toll on Catherine and her young family. I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't really know, I was very confused. My mom had spent like nine out of the 12 months with us in Oklahoma and I just wanted to be home. For the sake of her kids and her own mental health, the family packed up and moved back to Winnipeg. They bought a house a block away from Catherine's childhood home where her mom and dad still live. There must have been moments for you where mm -hmm. you went to that dark place. You've got two little kids mm -hmm. and you say to yourself, I'm not gonna be around to see them grow up? Yeah, I do. I, um, usually I just call my mom <laughs> or Craig or I just sit and cry, and I know that that's okay. I know crying's fine, uh, but I don't like to cry in front of my kids. I don't want to leave them, but at the same time, I want them to get used to just being with my husband or just get used to being with my mom and dad. <laughs> Diane Reeford, Catherine's mom, is a retired radio personality. The two are very close. The cancer diagnosis has brought them even closer. A sucker punch to the stomach, because oh, as a parent you say, kidding. let it be me. Oh, absolutely let child. it be me, not my child. Oh, give my eye teeth for that, yes. They gave her two to six years. Yes, imagine somebody saying that. Yes, imagine. So, yeah, the but back home and with the support of her family, Catherine was determined to keep on living. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Catherine helps you see the light. She really does. She's one of those people that you go to encourage her or to cheer her up, and she ends up cheering you up. <laughs> Catherine wants Elliot and Quinn to know her folks better so they can share stories about her when she's gone. I brought some extra The gift of her children being close, and I feel so close to them, is really special. And to be able to share stories oh, exactly. about their mom <laughs> with them. Oh, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, and I do that every day, my gosh. Every day I'll <laughs> tell them about how silly she was, or she used to do that, too. Yeah. Oh, the Lord, the Lord is good, good to me, me. And so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me, Johnny Appleseed. Let's eat. <laughs> Fours. It was okay. that silliness, openness, and inner positivity that attracted Joel Ledlow to Catherine Reeford. One nine. We have two beautiful children, and they're beautiful because of her, because she's fought to be here. I know who she started out as, and what brain cancer took away from her, and what she's had to build back. Keep your feet underneath you, there you go. Boom. The couple has tried to remain upbeat. Get him, get him, get him. Prioritizing the kids. Boom, pop it in. Joel teaches martial arts, preparing Quinn and Elliot for hurdles they will confront down the road. How much of what's going on do the kids understand? We're very open about everything, so there's not too many questions that they need to ask because the conversation is always happening. Good job. No secrets, everything up for discussion. Oh, love you. What has mom told you about her cancer? Like everything. Like it's still in her head technically, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, but uh, it's not growing. Okay. Do you worry about your mom? Uh, I kind of got used to it. And when you think about it, what do you think? I don't know if it'll come back, but like if it does, then we'll just try and do our best. Mm -hmm. Today we're just going to sing it all together. And doing their best means living life Five, to the six, fullest. Seven, eight. The day starts like the rest we've seen. Another carving copy of an old routine. Day what made me truly happy was to be on stage and to inspire people. If I'm not inspirational, then I've lost my way. I, I want to bring hope to people. I want people to see that things are possible even with a terminal diagnosis. Hello. That means embracing life, sharing her love of the theater with others, including son Elliot. Woo, awesome, that was great. 
Catherine made a triumphant return to the stage alongside best friend Craig in a performance of Romeo and Juliet with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. Here we go. It was the most spectacular moment. In all of our careers, we've never been on stage together. Doctors told her it'd be impossible for her to do that. But impossible wasn't stopping Catherine. I saw Catherine's brain working in a different way. It was rewiring itself. Her speech got better, her productivity, efficiency, all of that. And I wanted to keep that ball rolling. So I presented the idea to her. I said, well, what about doing The Amazing Race Canada? She said yes. I'm Catherine. I'm Craig. And we're best friends. Yeah. So they sent in their audition tape. <laughs> And was the cancer a concern? I don't have a short-term memory. Um, but also, too, like, me overcoming that fear of, shoot, I don't have a memory. Shoot, I can't do this. Shoot, I can't do that. It's me just being like, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And she did just that. Remarkably, although doctors gave her just two to six years to live, Catherine is a survivor. It's been more than nine years since her diagnosis. Her oncologist at Cancer Care Manitoba in Winnipeg is Dr. Marshall Peets. She's been around now for nine years. Right. How do you explain that? It's not clear exactly why, just that the treatments happen to have been effective for her. Can Catherine beat this cancer? I actually think that she is beating this cancer. She's really been able to, I think, uh, uh, find a very exceptionally high quality of life despite her diagnosis, which to me is an incredible success. Will the cancer come back? So we expect that it will. At some point there will be a change that we'll have to address and that it will eventually take her life. And that means keeping an eye on things. So every three months, Catherine has an MRI to reveal whether cancer has returned. So I have an MRI usually pretty much on a Friday and then the next week I see Dr. Peets. That week between the MRI and the meeting with Dr. Peets, we call that Skanxiety Week. So um, my family are, are kinder to me during Skanxiety Week. It's finale time. Being here blows my mind. And Skanxiety was on full display the night before Canadians would watch the finale and learn who won The Amazing Race Canada. Catherine, Joel, Craig, and husband Brandon were in a Toronto hotel room waiting to learn the results of an MRI from Dr. Peets. I was worried about it, but I knew that I had, I knew that we had won. And even if it was not stable, I knew that it would be a great opportunity for me to um, raise the voice of brain cancer. Just, just tell us. Wait, it's on. Yay! Yay! Jazz, hands. Okay. Jazz hands, the celebration of a stable MRI. Her cancer in check. No one looking at you today will say this woman is fighting a fatal disease. And that's part of the trouble with it though. It's, it's invisible, right? It's an invisible disease. And so I have to talk about it and that's the inspirational part about it. Back in Palm Springs, the reunion of race competitors. Cheers, yes, cheers. cheers. Court from Team Court in Alley and Marika from Jesse and Marika competed head to head with Catherine and Craig during the intense competition. We gotta tell Catherine. Okay, we gotta, just, tell just, we gotta tell them. I know. They were inspired by Catherine's bravery. Allie's mom is also battling terminal cancer. It's something that really, really meant a lot to us to be a small part of their story. Catherine's journey also resonated with Marika, who hit the mat in second place. As much as it sucks to be this close, there's no other team I would rather miss it for. Why such generosity of spirit? Catherine has struggled through so much in her life with everything she's been going through. She didn't show any weakness whatsoever, and I think that just shows how strong her character is. And I'm glad to see And Catherine's back. strength is inspiring others. Where was yours again? Same place as mine, um, right? The front left. Yeah. She is working with Cancer Care Manitoba, supporting those with a similar diagnosis. She understands the fear. 
you being you is great. You getting up and teaching and, and trying to do what you did before. She's also volunteering with the Brain Tumor Foundation of Canada and the Canadian Cancer Trials Group. I did it to raise awareness and find a cure for this terrible disease that currently has no cure. Please welcome brain cancer warrior, Catherine Reefer and her two amazing children. Oh, Canada. And she raises awareness for cancer research wherever she goes. And it doesn't stop there. Catherine and Craig used some of the $250,000 they won with Amazing Race Canada to start a scholarship at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, where it all began for the best friends. You found yourself. I did. You found your priorities. I did. You have so much to live for. I know, and, I, and I'm happy to wake up every day and do what I love and be around the people that I love, especially this guy. And it's special to be near my family now. People are reaching out to me that I don't know and just saying thank you. You're an inspiration. I, I hope that I can continue to be that. Catherine did the impossible and she's motivating people in all aspects of their life. They don't have to have a cancer diagnosis to be inspired by Catherine. She's been inspiring me for 25 years. <laughs> The results of Catherine's most recent MRI have come in, and it's another jazz hand celebration, a clean scan showing no new cancer growth.